in this section, dear friends, we shall talk of what we sing in liturgy, at Mass, in the Eucharist. And the basic documents that will guide us, dear friends, are Sacrosanctum Concilium, Musicum Sacrum, General Instructions of the Roman Missal, especially on how liturgy should be celebrated, music in Catholic worship, sing to the Lord, music in divine worship. Dear friends, we see that highlighting the function of liturgical music in relation to the parts of the Mass, we recall that music punctuates. It has a role of highlighting prayer or a ritual action. This is seen, for example, in the acclamations. If we have to ask ourselves, what are we to sing in, in liturgy? The first and important thing to sing in liturgy is the acclamations, meaning the Alleluia, Sanctus, Eucharistic Memorial, Acclamation, Mystery of Faith, we proclaim your death, and the great Amen. Music accompanies an action, like processions at the entrance with the sprinkling of water, recording the penitential rite, gospel acclamation, offertory, communion, recessional song after the day, after the after the liturgy, the celebration of liturgy. And also we see that even in the Lamb of God, it accompanies the breaking of the bread. Music covers up or bridges to ensure a tasty mood of the celebration. Just enough to remember the preparation of gifts, that as the gifts are being prepared, there is music that is played, then also at the end of the liturgy. Music encourages meditation. It's just enough to remember the prelude and the postlude. Prelude is a piece of music that is played before the act begins, before the liturgical act begins. And the postlude is the one which plays through to keep people in the mood after the liturgical act has taken place. And so we see that the prelude and postlude have, uh, are with melodies of tunes, of praise, petition, mercy, thanksgiving, adoration, that when we hear them, they remind us of these aspects of praise, petition, mercy, and the rest. So what do we sing in liturgy, dear friends? We sing the scripture. We sing the word of God. Sacred scripture is of greatest importance in the celebration of liturgy because it's God himself speaking. So we sing, the, we are like voice of God as we sing and proclaim the word of God. For it is from the sacred scriptures that psalms are sung. So liturgical songs are scriptural, are biblical. In their inspiration. And so because they are biblical and scripture based on the word of God, they have the dignity of being proclaimed because we are a voice of God speaking to us ourselves but also speaking to others. We sing also the liturgical text because liturgical texts are linked to the word of God. What we celebrate in the liturgy is the word of God put in action. So we sing the liturgical texts as commemorated, celebrated and passed on by the tradition, meaning what you what the apostles passed on when they, from what they saw the Lord uh, acting and saying, from what they saw the Lord living his life and told them, do this in memor of me, what you have seen. So we sing the liturgical text because they reveal God's revelation in the person of Jesus Christ throughout the liturgical season, liturgical year, precisely because it's centered around the Jesus' Paschal mystery of passion, death, and resurrection. So we sing the events around the liturgical year, Christ himself, especially his Paschal mystery of passion, death, and resurrection. Generally, therefore, from sing to the Lord, music in divine worship, the document, one of the documents we mentioned above, we highlight the singing of dialogues and acclamations. That if you have to sing, we have to sing especially dialogues and acclamations, antiphons and psalms. Refrains and repeated responses, and then hymns. When you talk about dialogues and acclamations, this re-emphasizes the importance of the sung dialogues between the priest deacon also and the acclamations as well. Among the parts to be sung, preference should be given especially to those to be sung by the priest and the deacon and the lector with the people responding or by the priest and the people together, when we sing together. So as long as the people are involved, as much as possible, we have to sing. And uh, as long as there's also a response, it's also beautiful and encouraging that we sing. At Mass, the dialogues, the Lord be with you, are basically at the beginning of Mass, before the Gospel, at preface, before receiving the final blessing, and the very most important parts of uh, um, the Mass itself. But here, 
they are reminding us at every moment that the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us as we carry out the liturgical action because we are carrying out the liturgical action in his name. We talk about the antiphons and psalms as aspects to be sung as well because the psalms are poems of praise that are meant whenever possible to be sung. The responsorial psalm after the first reading holds great importance because it fosters meditation on the word of God which we just heard in the first reading as it prepares us for the second reading if it's a Sunday or a solemnity or a feast and especially prepares us for the gospel. So the, we see the responsorial psalm as a response of the people towards God's word which has spoken to us and at the same time preparing to receive the good news. Psalms are appropriate for the entrance and communion chants too. We talk about another aspect of refrains and repeated responses as aspects to be sung. The liturgy also has texts of a litanic character, like the Kyrie eleison, Agnus Dei, Quitolis Peccata Mundi, Miserere Nobis. So these are of litanic character, litany, like a litany, uh, and especially at Mass. So we also sing the response to the prayer of the faithful at Mass or the intercessions at morning and evening prayers during the liturgy of the hours where the Lord invites us to pray at all times. And also the liturgy of the saints in the various rites. We sing them. We also sing, dear friends, the hymn. A hymn is a religious song or a poem typically of praise, adoration and praise to God, a prayer to God. Hymns may be used at entrance, preparation of the gifts, communion or recession at the end of the liturgical act. The hymns should be appropriate to the liturgical action uh, and especially following the structure right from the beginning of the Eucharist, following the four aspects of the introductory rites, liturgy of the word and liturgy of the Eucharist and liturgy of communion. And the hymns are to serve only until the end of that action. Once the action finishes, the, every music should stop to avoid exaggerations. Hymns from non-Catholic traditions may be used if the text is in conformity with the Catholic faith and teaching, meaning it's in conformity with the sacred scriptures because the Holy Spirit speaks to us in different ways. It can also speak to us through other people who are not really Catholics but living the Christian value of the word of God. Singing at Mass, the Eucharist. This is the most aspect which has been waiting for us after this introduction. That what do we sing the, within the structure of the Eucharist, meaning the introductory rites, the liturgy of the Word, liturgy of the Eucharist, concluding rite. We talk about, for example, the prelude. At the, this is the introductory piece of music before the liturgic, liturgical rite begins. This we saw already. But here we see ourselves also with the, a dialogue between silence versus meditation, music versus teaching music. In the, in the beginnings there, some people best prepare for mass in silence. They prepare silence. Some people best prepare for mass with meditation music. So a bit of music maybe could serve. Uh, this probably the best time to teach and assemble new music, especially the ones that we shall use in the liturgical uh, rite that is yet to come. How to do this? The best to find the balance. It's good to find the balance knowing the context of what I am and knowing the needs of the people so that whatever we choose helps people to participate fully, consciously, actively as well. The introductory rites. The entrance song has especially four basic purposes. It opens the celebration, opens. It fosters unity among the gathered assembly who are gathered as children of God to pray to the Father. It directs minds and hearts to the mysteries of the liturgical season or festivity according to the liturgical year. Is it in Advent? Is it in Christmas? Is it in Lent? Is it in uh, uh, Easter? Is it in, uh, is it in ordinary time? It accompanies the procession. This is General Russian Roman Miso 47. If there is no singing at the entrance, the antiphon given in the Miso is recited. The processional chants, especially the entrance and communion song, of course the offertory as well, are very important for creating and sustaining an awareness of the community gathered together in the form of the family. And setting a festive communitarian tone to the liturgical celebration. Dear friends, all processions uh, remind us that we are a community of pilgrims on earth, as a family on earth, moving together towards our Heavenly Father. So whatever we do is a pilgrimage together with the Lord. Talking about the penitential rite or sprinkling rite, also known as the general confession and absolution, this penitential rite may be sung 
sprinkle, sprinkling rite often replaces the Pentecostal rite, especially on Sundays and Easter, to recall baptism, our washing off of our sins with the waters of baptism and being cleansed, as well as becoming one member of the family. We talk about the glory that it may be sung. Remember, we're saying may be sung. So, may not be sung, depending on the context. That meaning that the Gloria, everyone can sing it together. Or the choir alone. Or the assembly alternating with the, the choir. It may also be recited, either by all or by two parts of the assembly responding to one another. The text of this hymn may not be replaced by any other text. Dear friends, when we say it may be sung, it means that uh, if there is a big assembly with many people, it's good or to sing most of the things uh, because the singing helps to ensure active participation. However, we may decide according to the context where we find ourselves. In the liturgy of the word, we highlight responsorial psalm, gospel proclamation, intercessions. In the responsorial psalm, this is an integral part of the liturgy of the word of God and holds great liturgical and pastoral importance because it fosters meditation of the word of God it is preferable that the responsorial psalm be sung at least as far as the people's response is concerned, at least the response of the people. And it's better if it's sung from the humble or another suitable place because the word of God is God himself and deserves dignity. It is all, it's unlawful to substitute other non-biblical texts for the readings and the responsorial psalm which contain the word of God. No, the word of God is the word of God and has to be read and proclaimed as it is and no substituting should occur. This is in general instruction of Roman Missile number 57. Songs or hymns may not be used in the place of responsorial psalm. In as much as possible, it must be musical setting of the psalm itself, not simply a song based on the, on the psalm, whereby there is a response and there's also the, uh, the strophe, the response, the strophe. We sing the gospel acclamation that it, has, it should be sung because it's an acclamation, remember? Uh, praise, an acclamation. The acclamations are shouts of joy which arise from the whole assembly as a powerful and meaningful ascent to God's word and action. What God has spoken, uh, we acclaim and say, Yes, they are important, the acclamations, because they make some of the most significant moments of the Mass stand out. The people should know the acclamations by heart in order to sing them spontaneously. Dear friends, the acclamations ought and must be sung, even at Masses in which little or less is sung. The acclamations here we, we are talking about are especially Hallelujah, Sanctus, uh, Eucharistic Memorial Acclamation, Mystery of Faith, a great Amen. The intercessions may be sung or may not be sung. It's good at least the assembly sings the refrain. Liturgy of the Eucharist, preparation of the gifts. The procession bringing the gifts is accompanied by the unoffertory chant, which continues at least until the gifts have been placed on the altar. Remember, the music accompanies an action, and when the action finishes, we have to stop. Singing may always accompany the rite at the offertory, even where, when there is no procession with the gifts. Genesis fraction of Roman Missal, number 74. For example, here we say that the holy, holy, sanctus, may be sung or said. Genesis fraction of Roman Missal, 79. But it's good to sing if there are many people around your friends. Memorial acclamation, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. This should be sung. Then great amen, which responds to this for sure, should be sung naturally. Liturgy of the Eucharist, communion rite. The Lord's Prayer may be sung. Dear friends, it's the Lord's Prayer. As much as possible to sing it, even when we have few. But anyway, they say it may be sung. The Lamb of God continues until the priest completes the fractioning the host. The last time ending with the words, Dona nobis pacem, grant us peace. Dear friends, while the priest is receiving the sacrament, the communion chant begins. Its purpose is to express the communicants union in spirit by means of unity of their voices, to show the joy of heart and highlight more clearly the communi communitarian nature of the procession as pilgrims to receive communion, to receive the Lord and receive him in our hearts. The communion song should foster a sense of unity. It should be simple and not demand great effort. Meaning the assembly should be able to sing without a hymnal book as much as possible. Songs with reference work well. The responsorial format, that is a strophe and at the same time response. The communion song ends after all have received communion. This may be followed by a meditative silence, then prayer after communion. Or it may be followed by song of praise and thanksgiving 
then later on silence, and after which the prayer after communion. The silence enables one to contemplate thanking God for the gifts of Christ's body and blood as it enters into oneself, praying that God continues to take possession of all of us.